the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, here I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glazer podcast. Ah, oh, starting the week off fresh. It's Tuesday, guys. Welcome to the show. Anya Marina is here. Hey, Bubba. With gorgeous lipstick on. Is that a new color? Mm, a it's new three shot. colors in one. It three is. in one. It's you mix a it hybrid. I saw you had some new lipstickies I got them on all tour this weekend. Up How do you pick them out? Do you order them online? Do you out go of desperation? <laughs> Right, but like, where do you go? Like, how do you know? I cry. Um, and lipsticks I go are hard my... to. Um, you just show up crying at a Sephora. Believe it or not, these to... are hand me downs from Kate Walsh. Uh, oh. I just get stuff oh, from nice. my celebrity friends. I have two. You and Kate. But when did she, um, like give that? Like, were you just over at her house and she's like, "Here's my lipsticks drawer, growl, go." <laughs> yeah, she's like, "I got sent all this shit. Do you want it?" And she gave me a huge box of stuff which I have made last. I think three and a half years, but I got hooked on this one. It's Anastasia and it's soft pink. People ask me about this all the time. I'm not one yeah, of those girls. Actually, I am one of those girls that hates giving my secrets away, but I'm telling you now because I want you. This is the best lipstick. Soft pink. Every matte girl is a girl by who Anastasia. hates giving secrets away. That's why Just, I never trust people who give their secrets away because it's not really their secret. Unless it's me telling you the or plant squalling, ordinary plant squalling, do not buy it on Amazon. <laughs> do not. I made the mistake this weekend. Oh, I've yeah. heard rumors that buying skincare on Amazon, you get, sometimes they have the bottles, but then they'll put different stuff in it. That's cheap. But I only thought that would be for high-end products. You know, your drunk elephants, your uh, Ori Bays. I don't know. what Whatever the fuck is. Like over $20 for a thing. Mine's seven fifty for a little thing. $5 on Sephora. I don't even know why I went to Amazon. I paid 10 It was in a bundle and I paid 20 for it. So I go, oh, it's more. It arrives. I've been using this stuff for over five years. I know what the consistency is. And this was gelatinous and the real consistency is more water. And I'm like, I got screwed. So do not buy your skincare on Amazon. Do not buy your skincare on Amazon. Do not buy your skincare on Amazon. They are repackaging it with cheaper shit. And it's like, and you think that why would they do that for a $5 thing? How much more money could they save by, it's $5, but they do. And I wrote an angry review. It's the first review I've ever written on Amazon <laughs> for anything. Because people what did you know. say? I just said this product, I've heard rumors of this happening and this is 100% happening because I've used this product forever. The packaging is exactly the same down to the cardboard box. The little thing comes in, but inside it is not the product. And it made me mad because this is my number one product and I just imagine someone has the chance to find this product product, and it for to, to change their life the way it did me. And if I would have brought, bought this product for the first time from Amazon, I would never use it again. And I would still be wearing night creams that are $80 that don't absorb anything. And this is five. To, uh, it's changed my life. So do not buy it from Amazon. Buy it from Sephora. It's super cheap. What's um, it called again? It's the Ordinary 100% Plant Squalane. Squalane. The Ordinary is the best skincare stuff. It's wow. okay, cool. clean, it's cheap, and it's simple. Um, I just love it. But yeah, that and then Anastasia Light Rose. What the hell was soft it called? Soft pink. Uh, soft wait, pink. Soft labia. And it's mm -hmm. matte. Yeah. Well, your, the, your ideal shade for your lips is the color of your nipple. <laughs> we, yep. we do know that. So, so mine is brown. I love brown. <laughs> no, I'm guessing yours are no. like translucent a little, like pinkish. My nips? Yeah. Like mine. Because uh, we have the same kind of skin tone. I guess I've never seen your nips. You've seen mine so many times. Yeah. I thought yours were perfect and kind of like a brownie thing. They can be brown sometimes, but then when they're like not, they're like more pink. Like oh, maybe it has to do. You know, with like cold? when they're harder, they get brown because they condense. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No one needs to hear this. <laughs> they do. The skin condenses. I bet men's balls do the same thing when you're cold and it contracts your ball <laughs> yeah. color gets probably darker. Yeah. Um, what was I just gonna say about tits? I do want to say that um, to toot my own tits, I <laughs> <laughs> was. Doing a, <laughs> I can't do it. It's that was Anya's voice, by the way. Do it that again. That was Anya. Nikki's left tit. Here's her right one. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> so good. That's so good. My stylist, Danny and Emma, they do a lot of celebrities. And the other day, when we were fitting for the the Critics Choice Awards, and Chris was there, they they did me a favor. I don't even know they did it because Chris was there, but they were like, 
because my tits were like falling out of this one dress. I like bent over and they just both came out. I'm like, guys, this isn't going to work. I was like fastening my shoe and they both came out and I came back up and I'm like, they're both out. Fully out. <laughs> Like it was like I was like a, a woman in a tribe who was like feeding her child. You know when the kid just like takes yeah. the tit out. Like it was so yeah. that it was a dress made for that. And so um, when they uh, Emma was like someone, one of my friends just asked me recently who of all our clients has the best boobs, and I, it was hands down you. And I was yeah, like, yeah. Are you I've never serious? seen anything like? Yeah. And she was like, That is so. She. I was like that. I don't even care if I won a Critics' Choice Awards. You've seen so many famous... They've seen Jessica Alba's tits. You know, I don't know if she saw it because that day they had to rock, paper, scissors because they either had to work with me or Jessica Alba, so one of them had to take each of them. And I gotta be honest, they were hoping to get me because I'm a good hang. And they didn't know... Alba ended up being great, but they were like, she could be fucking hard to deal with. Because guess what? Most celebrities are not that pleasant of people. The higher up you go, you're kind of an asshole. I'm just tired of it. Tired of hearing stories about successful people being jerks, beloved people that you love. It's not just Ellen. This is the thing. Like, there's so many more Ellens, people that you love who are just genuinely mean to people all the time. And you hear because it from of this, what? The they're famous? And they're, yes. uh, what did you say? And you hear it. You hear the real deal from the stylists. You hear it from trainers. You hear it from stylists. Oh, you hear yeah. it from drivers. This is makeup artists. They're all talking. A lot of them are like, you know, really diplomatic about it. But you ask around and you know, you know who's cunty. And you know what? Go on Demois. You'll find out there too. You'll find out I eat a dry salad with lots of pepper. But you won't hear I'm a cunt. And if you do, I'm telling you, they had it coming. Because I... I don't treat people cruelly, especially people who are w waiting on me and doing jobs for me, getting paid less to do so much more hard work than me just sitting there and memorizing some lines. It's just insane to me that um, that actor that ever actors or talent talent the word talent just needs to get out the, out of the fucking door. That's what we're referred to on set. Talents coming through. Talent walking. And I'm like, <laughs> easy. I'm hosting F Boy Island. It doesn't take that much. Mediocrity coming through, <laughs> luck, luck coming through. Uh, her parents Nepotism. supported her for five years when most people's parents would have pulled out. Otherwise, she would be, you know, working at a middle school right now coming through. <laughs> That's what they luck. should do. Like all your her former luck. credits, former substitute teacher in. Yeah. <laughs> Former it's just the word talent. It just makes you walk in in a room like, oh my god, who am I? And yeah, you need to have a little confidence. I recently told Chris I'm not staying at an Airbnb in LA when we go out there. That is a place where of an affordable place. I'm not doing it. I had a good year. I want to be somewhere that makes me feel nice. I want to be in luxury. It sucks that to have a nice place in LA, it's like $800 a fucking night. And I know that that is horrifying to some people. And they're like, Nikki, you're, you couldn't be more out of touch. I know. But I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm roughing it anymore. Because it really depresses me. And even if like, a, a, like we stayed in a really nice place. But it was so expensive. But it was not super nice but it was so expensive in santa monica what do you to like not to live have on like a homeless encampment it's like you know you gotta pay up what what do you like to have like what is it because you said that it doesn't make you feel nice good. what nice do you like walls nice decor a uh, tasteful like space clean nice <laughs> textured she wants textured wallpaper i want textured I walls like my mean. friend sarah lena i want i want things to be nice i don't want pictures of like you know that you got it um Home goods. Home goods of like a beach <laughs> setting. I don't care what it is, but I just want some taste and I want I want space and I want to not be I want to be able to sing really loud and not have the neighbors complain. I want that and I want I just want to feel like a little bit special. Sing not is code by, for this have is, sex with Chris. No, <laughs> we, we're not having sex right now. Are you kidding me? We're both so busy. This is not it's not happening. I just need to wail Taylor Swift songs about how not having sex. <laughs> No, I am set to five. Don't you worry about it. But um, no, it's not, we're not having screaming sex anymore. Where I have to <laughs> remember say, that person that, that asked if you were being murdered. Fucking, I was auditioning for the new Saw franchise movie <laughs> coming out. It was one of the torture scenes. Um, no, it's I just want I just want to feel nice. But here's the thing. That's my like out of touch celebrity thing. It's like Nikki needs to stay at a place that's a thousand dollars a night or whatever the hell it's going to cost. 
But you know what I don't need is to treat people badly to make myself feel better. And that's what most celebrities do. And they're staying in nice, place, nice places. So before you roll your eyes at me, which I would too, and be like, oh, you really need to stay in a nice place. At least I don't like want to make people feel bad about themselves all the time. Like so many celebrities do. It's kind of gross. You don't even want, because then you have to be friends with these people because they're at the top and you have to act like you get invited to the things they go to and you have to like schmooze with them. And then you like are friends with assholes. I don't know. I don't know where you draw the line where you're like, I don't really want to be friends with you guys, but it would help my career. And then maybe I could get more information to ruin you someday when you die and I write a tell all. <laughs> I, that's why I love Kathy Griffin. No holds. Yes. Someone recently, like I was been posting this woman who does dubs over celebrities. Her name is Simon Simon Tina or something. I forget. Oh, yeah. Her. And she's and so funny. She's I was so watching all funny. her videos today. <laughs> How good are they? The the Gwyneth one I posted, I was like, I only post Gwyneth when she's being mocked because get her off your screen. If you are following Goop or Gwyneth, do yourself. This is like, we should do goopless january you know how people are doing dry january <laughs> see how it feels to get gwyneth and all of that bullshit any influencer who has a green juice perfect life get them off your feed and see how you feel drink I mean, as much as you want drink alcohol all you want january use drugs get those people off your feed where you don't see them every day and see how it makes you feel because it does feel great the second i took gwyneth and goop off my feed i don't have to deal with that shit anymore uh, and you don't see it. You're not comparing yourself. Maybe you guys have less of a problem with it than I do, but I can't handle it. So that I don't girl follow is so her. funny. Making Lisa fun of. Timmons now. is her name. Yes, Lisa Timmons. Oh, she's so funny. She makes, she's me <laughs> with us, like writing, like she feels the same way about celebrities I do. Except My favorite was she the, had one about her and I was like, easy. Oh, she you did. You back away. You back off, bitch. The the thing Just about J Lo <laughs> applying bronzer. Oh, that was voiceover. so good. Just being like, a little melanin is really great, but just the right amount. Not too much because I want a career, but the one with um, Viola Davis. Viola Davis Talking to great. everyone yes. about all these white people about... Nepo babies. Uh, no, she's talking about um, just black people in film and being like, it's just so good. She's so... This woman is so good. So yeah. Uh, what's the name again? Lisa Timmons. Lisa Timmons, T I M M O N S. Uh, so check her stuff out. My nose is bleeding today. What? Because I just washed my face and I forgot to take off my pinky ring. I don't know if I think I'm in the mob or something, why I have a <laughs> pinky ring, but my sister bought me like a really expensive like pair of pants at this, um, what's it called? Thrift store in St. Louis, this really cool thrift store, and they were like gold. And they're really cool to wear on stage. And she was like, they fit me. So they'll probably fit you. Did not fit me. Embarrassing. Whatever. So I returned them. And this store had nothing I wanted. I mean, my sister was like, you wait till you get in the store. It, every You'll want everything. And I'm like, why do you want to dress like a sister wife? <laughs> like, I don't get what's going on. Oh, like, really? It was all like Laura Ashley stuff? It, no, it was just... It just wasn't my style. I, I like my sister and I just differ in that way. But I found this little gold ring that has a... Um, a J or a P. I don't know what it has as a signet, but it fits only on my pinky. And it hooked today when I was washing my nose on my nose and ripped the cartilage like uh. horribly. Uh. And so I'm, my nose outside, my nostrils bleeding pretty bad. Um, it made me feel alive because it hurts. So but sometimes, you know, when you hurt yourself, you bang your head and there's no <laughs> blood and you're like, come on, give, <laughs> give me, me something. something. I just suffered so much. No one's going to be able to tell that this was actually painful. I love a little blood. It's a perfect amount. It looks like a little dot. Like I almost have a piercing there. But it, I felt really like that when I slipped and fell on black ice in Kalamazoo, leaving the hotel room. And I, I fell like like an animated character slipping and falling. Mm. I was like, Phew! and then like landed on my back. And then this Pellegrino bottle, I watched it in slow motion. It fell and then it just yes. shattered all around me. And um, I was like, oh, I hope I have some kind of cool wound for how much pain I'm feeling on my hand. And it, there's nothing. It was just like I skinned my hand, but you couldn't see anything. Yeah. it's just, it, There's like an indent of gravel, but that's it. And you're just like, yeah. it looks like you were just sleeping on some gravel. And the people are just like, I don't have any sympathy for you unless it's yeah. bleeding. Like you yeah. need blood to get that simp. Um, <laughs> We were in Kalamazoo. We were in Juliet, Illinois, like depressing, like <laughs> Midwest cities, cold. I say that as being from a depressing Midwest city, cold St. Louis. So I'm, I'm only I'm throwing 
rocks in my cold glass house. I understand <laughs> that. Um, but yeah, we stayed in like kind of shitty hotels because there's like no nice hotel. There was a nice hotel in Kalamazoo. I guess it was really too expensive. It's like, you know, if it were just me on the road, I'd be staying nice places, but you got to put up, a, you know, for us, it's just two rooms. So maybe we should bump it up anyway. We stayed at like places that I would have stayed when I was like working in honky tonks and just kind of, like it's fine i'm just i don't I, like when i was literally I, w I went to kalamazoo in probably 2005 and worked at some like sports bar and then they put you yeah. at, the, at the super eight across and now that super eight is now a home to suites and it's like a little bit it, it was nice things are clean the staff was nice one guy in kalamazoo the, the front desk <laughs> knew me which is always sweet but he stay he goes, bridge stay bridge suites yeah in kalamazoo shout out to zeke who worked for desk or whatever his name is it was something like zeke and he was a fan and he kept trying to get my attention and i was just not in the mood for it because there were lots of people in the lobby i just didn't want to have a moment i could tell his his comment was going to be inappropriate i could just tell but then i went to the gym and i forgot my key in the gym so i had to go to the front desk to ask to get let back in the gym and of course zeke is there and he's like let's me and he goes and i'm on the phone with my fucking egg freezing doctor as i'm doing it and he's talking to me and i'm like sorry i'm on the phone i'm just in a rush i need to get a key i'm sorry i don't mean to be rude but i'm on the phone i'm muting the phone and then i unmute and i'm like yeah i can do that um so i start injections on this day and he's just like i just have to tell you i'm like you don't have to just tell me anything i just told you i'm on the phone it's your job to get me a key let me back in the gym i wasn't being rude at all and then he has to stop me and say i just need to say did you bring a has hastily packed suitcase which is oh. a reference to my joke about my vagina, which is inappropriate, Zeke. I know it. And I said, oh, that's a good because it's travel related hotel. But also that I'm like, was generous. Don't don't talk about my vagina. I know I do. But why do you think you can? I got it, dude. I got to tell you this quick thing about your mm -hmm. clit. I'm a huge <laughs> And, you know, people bring me pictures of hastily packed suitcases for me to sign. People oh uh, people God. reference hastily packed what? suitcases all the time. If you're buying tickets to my show, fine. Say whatever you want to me. <laughs> Just know that I am rolling my eyes and making fun of you behind your back because <laughs> do better. But I do love, I mean, I met so many besties this weekend. They were all so sweet. They all are just like people I would hang out with. I There's none of that weirdness. There was one weird guy, really weird guy this weekend. And it was ironic because he was at a show where we had cops. I've oh, yeah. started getting cops at my shows because I'm scared someone's going to Christina Grimmy me. Um, look it up if you've never heard of it. It's the most horrifying thing ever. She is a girl that was on, I believe, The Voice. And then she was at a meet and greet and someone just come, came up and shot her point blank. A guy mm -hmm. that was in love with her. And she had never even met him before. And he had for months been talking about her and telling people that it was his girlfriend and that they talked online. And he got hair transplant for her. He lost. He got a trainer. He got in shape. And then he didn't even try to like meet her. He just walked up to her and shot her. I'm like, why did you get a hair transplant? And then her brother immediately tackles him to the ground while his his sister is bleeding to death because she's got shot point blank in the chest and I think in the head. Mm -hmm. And then the guy struggles away and then shoots himself. So we never got any answers. Um, but I oftentimes at meet and greets, men will come up to me with their hands in their pockets. Single men, solo men, which I don't have a problem with. In fact, I encourage people to go solo to my shows. But they walk up and they have their hand in their pocket because they're nervous. And they look nervous. And guess what? You would be ner you would be nervous before you met someone you really cared about. And you would also be nervous before you killed someone you really care about. <laughs> that would be a nervous guy. So the energy is the same. And so I honestly, probably five times in my career, have braced myself to die. Where I go, this is it. This 50 50 odds you're about to die right now. And I'm sick of feeling that way. So I'm going to start having cops come just to like at least shoot the guy if he shoots me. They're not really going to have a chance to tackle him before he just pulls out a gun and shoots me. I really don't have a preventative. I, I got to start doing maybe metal detectors, lie detector tests where people go, Do you have a gun? And then the little man with a machine goes, <laughs> He's not lying. Um, but this weekend, a guy comes up. And these people come up before him and they're like really sweet, take a picture and they go, get ready for the guy And then next up. And I go, oh, thanks for the warning. I could already tell this guy was causing trouble because I could, I'm just, you know, you just sense your surroundings. And he comes up and he goes, they were no fun. And I go, why? And he was like, I goosed them. They didn't like it. I go, what do you mean you goosed them? He's like, I goosed them. And I was like, you go, like, and if you don't know what goose means, it means 
you like grab their butt like a goose would, like a goose if it was biting you, just you kind of like honk, 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 you know? It's to a vagina, it's to a butt. I knew about goosing because in the 90s, my aunt got goosed. She was at Ace Hardware picking up something for my <laughs> grandma and we were all at the house and she came back and she was like, I got goosed! And we were all laughing because we had never heard of it. And everyone's just like, I look back on it and I'm like, so sorry, Aunt Nancy, that we all laughed that you got goose because everyone didn't know what that was. And then you told us what it was and we still laughed. I will say I was in fourth grade, so I was allowed to still laugh because I didn't understand what sexual harassment was. But the rest of my family, shame on you. Aunt Aunt Nancy got goosed by a stranger at at a fucking Ace Hardware. And this guy's goosing people in my line. And I go, why are you goosing? He goes, can I goose you? And I go, no. But you know what? You can ask me if you can goose me. Do that. And he goes, I used to goose a lot of women back at the bars and the fucking, I used to goose them all the time. And I go, why? I go, don't goose women. He goes, I, I don't, I don't. And I go, you promise me right now, you will never goose another person. That is weird. And he goes, I don't even go to bars. And I go, but you will go to a bar someday and you might pick up goosing again. And I go, all you have to do is ask. (laughs) Ask if you can goose someone. Honestly, that is okay to me. Just ask for consent. And he was like, okay. And it was just like, I, well, the cops were right there. I'm like, get this guy. The guy that, the goosing, the goosing man of Kalamazoo from 1997, <laughs> who has probably multiple reports of goosing women Many at counts. Kroger. <laughs> That's him. That's your guy. He just admitted to it in front of cops. It was wild. I've never that's heard insane. of anything where, but that's a thing. He's like, that's my whole thing, though. I goose. Like, that's what I'm known for. They call me the goose. He was with someone too, and I go, wh- how can you let this guy out? Like, get this guy out of here. It was just so wild to me, and it made me realize that like, creeps don't even fucking know they're creeps. They're so stupid. They like, he thought it was funny to goose people, like. I'm not saying not all creeps know, but like some creeps get off from the fact that they are creeps and they like that part of it. But this guy like genuinely thought goosing was like a fun pastime yeah, it's just or a something. cute word for inappropriate touch. Unreal. And he, I'm so sorry to the people in front of me. I think he did it to the man and he said she was pissed. <laughs> like his girlfriend was pissed. And I go, she had every right to be. Fuck you for goosing. So don't Why goose. Why do guys goose each other's balls? I've seen this a lot. Like with guy friends, they'll like, because they're they get fucking a, get, di- dying for affection. <laughs> they're dying to be touched. And they're the only way they like do it is like in a flicking you know, a towel hyperbolic or, gay yeah. way. So it's like not really touching because I would never they're, fucking they're actually. They're dying to. But I really want warmth and I'm just going to go for your scrotum because that way no one will ever misconstrue that I'm actually seeking intimacy with my with fellow men. Uh, but that's really what I want. I want to touch someone, but I got to do it in a jokey way. We got to go to break. We'll come back with more of my thoughts about um things that I don't know about and have really no degree for right after this. Okay. Also, wait, there was another story that I was dying to tell about this weekend. I know. I have on my list, Goosing Guy. (laughs) Yeah, Goosing Guy was out of control. The shows were really fun. We had a good time. You had fun, right? Oh, my God. It was so fun. You were riffing on songs in Joliet, and it was like the first time I had seen – you kind of just riffing and doing jokes in the middle of singing. I was like, oh, there's there's something happening here. It was really cool. It was fun. Yeah. I wanted to sing Antihero because that's the song I've been practicing with my voice coach who, um, yeah, who is very encouraging. And he helped me. Work, we worked on that song the other day. And so it was like, oh, I guess in Kalamazoo, I was like, the sound is so good. I kind of want to just like sing an extra song because I sang one song with you. And then I was like, I want another one. Why are people calling me? My fucking front desk is calling me. Something's happening downstairs. A fire. I'm in trouble. Do you ever feel like you're in trouble everywhere yeah. you go? It's probably just like your protein bars arrived, ma'am. I it's wish. Really I, I always think them. a phone call means I'm in trouble. That's I'm so in funny. trouble. Yes. I almost got in trouble this weekend. I like smoked a little weed in my hotel room in uh, Kalamazoo because I was about to go work out. It's not like I'm smoking weed to be like, oh, w- just hang out there all day and fucking jerk off and watch fucking anime. <laughs> I do it so I can like get <laughs> shit done. And I smoked a little weed and then the, I left my and the place smells like an armpit anyway. Weed is dressing up the place. And then this person like <laughs> I could see that someone from the front desk like came and I was in the very far end of this place. I think they saw me blowing it out the window. That's how they knew. And then they came and they stood outside my door. And I had already left 
to go to the gym. So I passed this person who was going to reprimand me in the hall. And then I waited and I was like, I bet they're going to my door. And then they just stood outside my door like angry. And I'm like, charge me the 250. I don't care. I've, you know, when I'm going through spurts of the smoking pot, I always just go. They're like, there's a $250 smoking fee. And I go, charge it. Let me just smoke him. Like, it doesn't linger. And I know people are like, that is rude. It lingers. Then ask to switch rooms. I do it all the time. I got to a <laughs> smoking room the other day that smelled like cigarettes. I would asked to change rooms. I'm sorry. I paid the extra 250 Let me do it. I have an addiction. Um, so I almost got in trouble. And I, the whole time I'm on the treadmill, like at the gym, I'm like, there's going to be cops there when I get back. And then I'm like, wait a second. It's legal here, recreationally, medicinally. Also, please arrest me for weed. I've been arrested three times already for it. Do it again. I need a little bump in the press. That would be a amazing to get arrested i had like a good face that day i was like i'm mugshot ready i was like practicing the face i would make which was really and i was like oh this is gonna be good but that's how much my mind spins and then i got back to my room and there was not even a note there so it was fine and the room didn't smell so um what was i gonna say about um oh yeah so i we sang the anti-hero song and then i was realizing that like people aren't getting the song like they don't they're not hearing the lyrics they're not understanding why the song is so good and then because the song is about being depressed even though like it's it's my, one of my favorite taylor swift songs lyrically because she really admits to being a narcissist she admits to being depressed she admits to like second guessing herself all the time and this is taylor swift and i feel like she's really letting us in on some demons very specifically and that we can all relate to and it's just catchy as fuck you can't you can't deny that and so um i felt like oh there's lots of jokes i have that relate to these like lyrics and so in between the lyrics i would tell jokes to justify what do you think it that i also feel about what you also feel what I also feel like I shouldn't be singing and I feel like bad that I'm people are like I paid to see comedy and she's just like doing karaoke like this no, is rude. No, you're so no. good. It's just it's fine but it's not what I'm known for. So I also feel like I still have to dress it up. Like I I care about people spending their money to see what they paid mm -hmm. to see and they did not see pay to see me sing. That's another thing that they some of them may do that but that's not what these people paid for. So I feel indulgent. So you're so and like I an hour and a half comedy. though. Yeah, but still that could be five more minutes of comedy that someone wants. And that could be the story they tell themselves if they don't like one thing about my act, they could say, and it was really indulgent, she sang a song. They always use something, again. They, they remember the thing. I went to go see a comedy show last night. What do I remember about it? The lows. <laughs> I remember the high highs and the low lows. I know what people do psychologically when they go see a show. They remember the best thing and they remember the worst thing and everything in between. They kind of just forget. Um, so wait, what were you going to say, Anya? What was your question? What was that verse about? Do you think that Taylor Swift, it, where she's talking about her nightmare of, you know, her future relatives where fighting? I, oh, the sister, my daughter, and I have this dream. My daughter-in-law kills me for the money. She thinks that I left them in the will. My family gathers around to read it, and then someone screams out. She's laughing at up at us from hell. Um, well, the whole thing is about like she's like kind of like I'm, I'm the problem. It's me. And then she has this dream where in the end she like she has first of all she admits that she's probably gonna have cunty children nepo babies that are like gonna use her her daughter-in-law like whoever marries her son or daughter yeah whoever marries her son or daughter if her daughter's gay is gonna end up killing her and then and she doesn't say nightmare she says she has a dream and then in the dream she's already she's already planned ahead knowing that she's going to be betrayed and she has it in her will that all of her money goes to her cats and that's in the sketch that um Mike Probiglia is in in the in the actual video but yeah they so then they read the thing and they're like oh my god she's fucking laughing at us from hell because we thought we were going to get money and in the in the will they don't get anything oh, so but like the cat part never makes it into the song right yeah but i i think it is inferred that, she, that my family gathers around and reads it and then someone mm. screams out she's laughing at it. like as they read it they're like oh she's fucking laughing at us like she got, got the last word right so it's almost about like she can never trust anyone even her children she won't end up trusting and they're gonna betray her and because it's like when i heard that there's a celebrity i heard that leaves stacks of money laying out i think she may have said it in her documentary but in case she didn't i don't want to out her but she gave me some pots and pans recently if you want to know and this person <laughs> used to leave out stacks of thousands of dollars and then uh, and her boyfriend's like She'd let them, and then she'd count it later to make sure that none of them skimmed some from the top. Because she was always, always knew someone was going to betray her. I'm glad that I'm not like that. I think that would be a sad place to be. I probably get stolen from all the time, but I don't know it. Um, unless it was egregious, 
And I just feel like sometimes my mom is like, you have a lot of people working for you. I have stashes of cash in my apartment that you would never find because I can't even fucking find them because I just forget where <laughs> I put cash. And it's in my mom's head to like hide your cash, even though I would just leave it out. I mean, when Taylor came to my house to redecorate it, <laughs> she was like, you have so I know this is like Nikki's bragging about having so much money day on the podcast, but I had so much cash. She couldn't. And I'm not saying this to be like, I just don't, I don't think about things like, I just don't, I don't remember. And then she, she, now she's paranoid that, and I'm like, just, and so I, I will write numbers next to it. So people think I know how much money it is, <laughs> but I don't actually count it. Cause if I saw a bunch of cash and I wanted to steal some, but I saw a number written next to it, yeah, like seven, I would go, four, this person's two, monitoring three. me. <laughs> and also I have so many cameras from, uh, when I go on the road, Noah, you've sent me so many cameras that I've smudged or whatever that I accidentally, um, found one in like a sock drawer because I had just, you know, come back from the road and emptied my socks. And I forgot that I put it in the socks because I wanted to protect it and not get it scratched. <laughs> so I found one in my sock drawer the other day and I put it up on the like shelf just to get it out of the way and remember it was there. And then Taylor was like, it's cool that you got cameras in there because I was, I was like, I do not have cameras <laughs> in my, I don't, that would be so weird if I had cameras everywhere. I'd never want to be that kind of person, but it does work. You just put up decoy things. Um, so last night I had such a fun night. I um went to see Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock at the Enterprise Center, um, which is the same place I went to go see the Blues game a couple weeks ago. And I was getting back in town. I was so tired. I have done a comedy show every single night for the past millennia. And I'm like, do I really want to go to one? But I've never seen Chris Rock live. I mean, maybe at the cellar when I was like, passing through the go to the bathroom but generally when he came by the cellar it it would be so packed down there and i don't really i don't really care about watching stand up being worked out i kind of want to see the final thing i'm not like that interested in the process and i know how clunky it can be especially for really famous people they get away with so much that they can make it like there are many stories i think of people seeing dave Chappelle, chris rock louis like greats and being like or, or Seinfeld even. I remember in Seinfeld's documentary, you see him go up and he bombs terribly in the 90s. When he was Seinfeld, he bombs. And so, because it's just, it's so new material and it's uncomfortable to watch. And I think there's people out there that are like, Chris Rock sucks because they saw him one night when he was like, but then you know what they do? They always go, I'm working on new stuff. And then that gives everyone to go, oh. whenever you see a comedian that has a tour that's like working it out or no offense, Mike Birbiglia, or like new jokes, don't, like it's always a defense mechanism because they know it sucks, which is true, but you don't see musicians go like, half ass in it tour you know what i mean like it's and comedians do this i do it anytime a joke doesn't do well and it's new i always go well that's new because i have to like let people know i don't worry i don't think that's good yet anyway they were great last night um we went to the enterprise center we got you know i matt wrote on my behalf to people that were working at matt uh you know anya's fiance he's my tour manager so i was just at the stiefel center in st louis which is connected to the enterprise center it's the theater like connected to it so he wrote to people there got me tickets and um and they fucking did the same blues treatment that i got P Aww. private parking Aww. backstage like what did you area go with? I went with Chris. And so we went together. He picked me up. He was going to spend $600 on tickets. He was like, they're $270 each. And I'm like, no, we are not paying for comedy in this economy. And so I was like, we're not doing it. And so thankfully, we got hooked up. And now I know I can just go to fucking any show there. And yes, get you on should Disney be doing ice. this. You're still King acting Brown. like I don't Nikki Glaser circa 2000, too. Well, it was nice. And Good. then we got to be in this private area. <laughs> and Chris Rock was great. Um, he, he went, went up on first. first. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was wondering who, how it was going to go, but it seems like every night it's Chris Rock and then Chappelle. Chappelle was running late because his plane got um, had issues, so they had to, they almost moved the show. They almost called the show, 
at like 6 30 it started at 7 30 and they were oh like we might just move this to thursday because his he's not gonna make it so he was super late and everyone was fucking pissed off because everyone has to put their phones in those yonder bags so everyone is losing their minds that like and then they sent the opener back up in between chris rock and dave which is just not how it's done like i felt so bad for rink and grum shout out to rick he like killed it like it was a hell gig going back up there after everyone had already we saw don we saw Rick Ingram, then Donnell Rawlings, then Chris Rock, and then Rick Ingram comes back up, and it is 11 o'clock at night, and we're like, oh my God. Let's do th- It's a Sunday <laughs> night, too, you know? So he did a really good job, though, and the crowd loved him. Um, but during Chris Rock's set, um, there was this woman sitting next to us in the Bomberito booth. Thank you so much to Bomberito team. They're like a car dealership. We were in a nice, you know, section. There's this woman sitting next to us who's clearly drunk, green sweater girl. And she's probably in her late 20s, early 30s. And she's drunk. She's wooing at bad times. She, You can tell she's like only knows Chris Rock because of his name and like the slap and like just not a comedy fan whatsoever. I couldn't tell if she was just a date of this guy or like his woman, but I'm guessing they've just been dating a little bit. Um, she keeps wooing at all the wrong places. She's drunk. Her woos are so loud. They they through a hockey stadium you can hear him and they even give an announcement um dj trauma i think is his name the guy that dj's before the event he he before rick ingram comes on he says don't shout out anything you're not helping the show there's no question you can ask that they want to answer shut up like he literally but he says in a nice way he's like don't shout anything it does not worth it you're gonna you're gonna get kicked out immediately with no questions asked I found out that not only do they get kicked out if they say anything, which they didn't to the girl that was wooing the whole fucking time, but she was in the bomberito booth, but the yonder bags, people, girls will take their nails and, and rip out the seams to get at their phones. Like people oh can't God. stand, they will cut them. They're like rats. With, right, they can't stand not having their phones. They're losing their goddamn minds. We got all this info, intel, but, um, so this girl is just wooing and just like, Yes. Uh huh. Oh my god, I love pizza. Like he'll mention <laughs> the word pizza, no. and she'll like grasp onto that word. Like every second was like a new thing. And then he says something about like guys shitting on Nancy Pelosi's desk. He's doing a bit about January six, and he's like, and they and it just you dress like that just to shit on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Something like that was his joke. Everyone laughs, and she goes, as they should. Oh no, as they should. Oh, and God. Nikki can't take that. Nikki's <laughs> not going to. So Chris puts his hand on my knee because he sees me going crazy. And I go, as they should. <laughs> and she is two feet from me. There is only an aisle between us. So we're both on the ends of the aisle. And she goes, as they fucking should. And she gets up and walks over to me and tries to get in my face to start oh, something. And cr- think her Chris gets le- relieves out of his chair. And and gets in, in between us. And I told him, don't you ever do that again. Don't you. E-. I go, all I said was as they should. I didn't get in her face. I didn't say you fucking dumb cunt like I wanted to say. I didn't say you drunk piece of shit. I didn't say anything. I said as they should. You think people should. Pi-. And, and all I wanted to say was, who's Nancy Pelosi? Why don't you like her? What has she done? Why don't why don't you like her? What 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 is it, even her title? What is she, what did she do? Like I, I wanted to just quiz her. That would have been it. But she, I would have loved for her to punch me in the face. I would have loved it. I so later as soon as this happened, she calms down, sits down. But I'm like, oh, I can't even focus. I'm fired up because I almost just got assaulted, and it really was avoided by Chris doing that. I think because I just wrote Chris being like, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast. Do you think she would have hit me had you got not gotten in the way? And he said, quote, um maybe who knows to actually hit someone takes something extra she's she'd have definitely gotten ornery and in your face i think she was drunk enough to hit me i really like the, all it took was me going and i didn't go like as she should in her face i was just to, you know to yourself i just said it to myself i go as he sh- as he should and so then um i am just uh, on fire my body's on fire i can't even focus i can't even like listen i'm like so ready to fucking s- s- get into it with this girl. I mean, I am re- I so I I look up for a ponytail because I don't want her to pull my hair mm-hmm. because I am ready 
to go and I know this bitch will get will pull my hair no no questions my hair looked amazing last night it was like long like I knew she would run for it and just tug me down because my goal was when we left to say something really snide and then duck out you know and then we're gone and I thought oh she'll grab my ponytail and fucking yank me to the ground as soon as I do that so I put it in a ponytail just so she wouldn't grab a little piece and then rip it out you know right so I'm gearing up and I go Chris I go, babe, I have to say something. I cannot, because she kept doing it. Any, he did, she didn't realize Chris Rock is making fun of her. And at one point, Chris Rock even made mention that there are white, there's probably white supremacists in the building. People who literally are at a black, a black performance and they are white. There's at least a couple. And I remember thinking there's probably not that like white power people. And then they go, yes, there are. She is right next to me. And then they, I think it was Donnell made the joke maybe about the white supremacists. He was like, they're not down here, like in the good seats. They're up mm-hmm. in the nosebleeds because yep. they're fucking stupid. And I go, no, they're not. Aww. They're in the bomberito box because they're rich these people this woman is had a vip seat and she's saying shit on pelosi's desk and by the way she doesn't even know she is i guarantee you she has no idea what nancy pelosi does i mean this woman is a fucking great a moron and so and either by the way I couldn't tell you really what she does either, but at least I'm not saying shit on her desk. You know, like I, I'll admit my ignorance. I I do know what she does, but and I'm not going to say it here because it might be wrong. But I believe she's the Secretary of State, yes. right? <laughs> oh, okay. No, I met her. I I listen. I don't. No one deserves to have their desk shit on. You it's just met a, Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, RuPaul's, RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race. Race. Oh my god. Yeah, it was That's awesome. So cool. It was so cool. And a lot of people are rolling their eyes right now because I know that we have listeners that are on the other side of things being like, yeah, they yes, they should. N- no one should shit on her desk. Let's be This woman was so disgusting. And so and my dad almost got into a fight with a Trumpy that he plays tennis with recently and like screamed in his face and they almost got into fisticuffs about it because this guy was such an ignorant asshole. And it was also about smearing shit on Nancy Pelosi's desk because that's wow. where it breaks down. If you think that's a good idea, you're a weird monster. You That's where all – if you think the shitting on someone's desk is a good idea, that's where we don't – we lose discourse. I can, okay, I can she's hear- the Speaker of the House. Sorry. Oh, wait, really? That's what I thought. Oh, well, she's the former Speaker of the House. Former, yeah, Speaker of the House now That's what is, we meant. Oh, my God. That's so embarrassing. Secretary just, of State was, um, God, who's the Secretary of State? We look it up. Secretary. People are Mallorca's? laughing at me so hard right now, and I deserve it. Um, anyway. Like I Mike? said, I don't know. I was going to tell you, I don't know what Nancy Pelosi does, but I know she doesn't deserve to have her fucking desk shit on. And so <laughs> she has some questionable stock trading things. But who cares? It, yeah, but you it's not. Have, then go to jail. Don't get your desk yeah. shit on. And by the way, the desk shitting on is is about being she. They, people wanted her hung. You know, like people wanted to kill her. That's what that represents. And that's what that woman was all about. I could tell. So, okay, so what happened? So I was telling Chris, I was like, I got, I gotta say something. Like, I'm not gonna let this go. Like, I, this woman and the people next to us were hating her because she wouldn't shut the fuck up. She was howling and screaming through all the jokes. We couldn't hear anything, but there was no security in my section, so there was nothing to do. Any comedy show, she would have been thrown out. Any comedy show. How many show. other people were in the box with you guys? We were in the very back row, so and down below was like a large drop off, so I couldn't see the people in the dark below. So she could have um, thrown you down there. No, 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 no. It was just was like any the part people of next to me. I could, no, not at all. I like I said, I would like to have a big wound on my face from being like I got punched by a Trumpy. Like, bring it on. Just because sh- I would never start a fight. All I did was just ask her as as they should, as they should. <laughs> and then so then Chris goes, You're a guest here. This is a like you don't want to make a scene. Like yeah. you and that was an important reminder. Like, I I'm got these tickets for free. I'm a guest here. This is someone's box. These are someone's seats that aren't here. Like, behave yourself. So what I did on the way out, I she was drunk. You could tell her boyfriend was so embarrassed, but he was, you could just tell it was the, like the Will Smith thing. Remember when Will Smith, he had to, he had to punch Chris Rock because if he didn't, 
whatever was on the other side of Jada looking at him like that was going to be worse than what the repercussions Oof. of punching Will Smith. And that guy shushing his girlfriend was going the, – the repercussions of him shushing her were going to be worse than just putting up with her being a, a complete embarrassment to him. So he let her go, right? So I knew this guy was henpecked in hell. He needed to know. So as I walk out – I'm, I'm like crossing right by them and I can tell he's aware of me leaving because he knows I fucking hate her and I'm ready to start trouble but I didn't it was an hour and a half of sitting next to them after that incident and I didn't do anything I didn't shoot a look I didn't go oh god I didn't do anything I was just like so then we leave and I Chris Chris goes through the curtains to leave and he's in the next room now and then I'm just staring standing at the curtain and I'm just staring at the guy I'm waiting for him to look at me before I leave and I'm just looking takes him two seconds because he's very aware that I'm there and then he looks over at me and I just go and I look at her I shoot a look at her and I go ugh, and I just (laughs) give him a look like what the fuck are you doing with your life like a lot you guys a long look of just like ugh, no and I did this like like kind of cross like "Eh," and then left which made me feel so good because it was Exactly. She's it's never going to get through to her, but at least I can save him. He needs to know, get away from this monster. Do not allow this anymore. Drop, yes. Leave her downtown. Find her own way home. <laughs> but it was so enthralling. I love almost getting into a fight. I love when someone wants to fight with me. It makes you I feel loved alive. It. I told Chris next time, never. If I ever, if a Trumpy ever tries to hit me, you let them. And I know I will be like, why didn't you defend me? I'm begging you right now. Don't get in the way. Please. I would love to get assaulted by someone crazy. And I know that that sounds scary, but I've never been punched in the face. I can get punched in the face once by a drunk woman. I can do it. Okay. Just let me have it. Thoughts. I'm going to say no to the person listening right now who's mentally ill and, and is going to pull one of those um, things at the meet and greet. So please take everything Nikki's saying with a huge grain of salt. No, you this will be is tackled not to the ground by cops if you do it. But in like okay. in a... I'm not, this is not me and telling any Trumpies to punch me in the face. I'm saying if it happens naturally, occurs naturally. In <laughs> if you're nature, feeling the vibe, then do it. <laughs> if you're feeling my like <laughs> libtard snowflake vibe, <laughs> fucking clock me in the face and I'll just be, I'll, I won't do anything that I'll defend myself, but you're going to look like an idiot. You're going to look like an idiot. And I've, I will prove that you're crazy. I've had that. But I'm a little crazy too. I just love a fight sometimes when I feel like I'm right and they're wrong. And I just, I'm like, I know what you feel, the the adrenaline coursing through your veins, or you're just like, just bring it. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Even though I don't know who the speaker of the house is. I mean, I literally said Secretary of State. And we had that, we sat that, we all sat on that for like we three minutes. Like, yeah, that's chilling. And there, I cannot believe the reaction we're going to get. From people well, who do you like, want to know who the secretary? We're going to get so state many is? DMs between the time where we realize Secretary of State and Speaker of House, <laughs> and then people are going to write us right after the DM. Oh, you just fixed it. We know. Yes, we're yes. morons. I even said before I said the wrong thing. I didn't know who she was. I no don't know one her knows title. who the Secretary of State is now. Oh, yes, they do. The sec- I I bet I would know it. Okay, if you ahead. gave me like three years right now. <laughs> Wait, okay. can you give me the first initial? Yes, A. There's just no way you know. The, their first name is A? Uh-huh. Do you know the gender? No. Okay. <laughs> Wait. This, the, the what makes Secretary you think State? you'll know that? Wait, like, just the, because I've known the Secretary of State before. Hasn't the Secretary of State been Condoleezza Rice? No. The, I think well, Hillary was. Right now. Hillary was. The, yes, that's right. Yes. Right now, who? what's the... What's the There's no um, way anyone here what are the know. What are the initials? A, B. A, B. Austin, Austin Butler. The last name <laughs> kind of sounds like an involuntary thing that we all do. Burp? Here's what I'm doing when I'm flirting. Fart, fart. What do I do when I flirt with a guy? Blink. Yes. Blinken. <laughs> you still don't know. Anderson Blink? <laughs> Anthony Blinken. Never have heard of him in my life. That makes me <laughs> no. feel so good. That there, there's no way that I would have ever conjured that. Did you have you guys heard of that name? No. Talk but, about not and the knowing former things. Former one. This weekend we met a state senator. Oh yeah. For Illinois, what's his name? Mike Hastings. Michael yeah. Hastings, state senator. Noah, how many sen- how many state senators are there? Oh, as God. many as there are states. Oh, actually, no. Well, there's more. There's two, I think like there's two, two senators per state. And then the House of Representatives, it's like, you know, based on population or size of state or whatever. But you right? have like local 
senators or something like yeah, that. I didn't know that shit. So I meet this guy I and he's either. a state senator. I'm like, I've never met a senator. This is so cool. I was like, I feel like I'm on Veep. I w- w- went up to him and I was like, what about this reform bill? Are we getting it passed? Like, I was so excited to be Veep for a second. And then Matt, on the way home, I was like, it's cool. How many senators have you guys met? This is pretty awesome. He's like, well, it's a state senator. I go, I know. There's two per state. That's like, there's only, f- you know, a hundred senators. And he was like, no, it's a state senator. I go, what the fuck are you saying? And there is state senators because they have their own Congress or whatever per state that there's state senators and then there's the and then there's just senators. And I'm telling you, if you want to get a ton of political pussy, become a state senator because no one thinks you're a state senator. They just think you're a senator. I didn't know there were separate senators. Anya, I'm, you didn't know I'm either. I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't know any of this. And so many people, I can feel your judgment. Whoever uh, these you listeners, judge I can, me. We, we should know this. I know, but but we were but we got we were don't. not educated properly. Well, you should educate yourself. I don't I know. Never, it's not going to stick. I'm I'm. I'm there are only about two senators per state. There are a hundred senators all in all. But does I that mean that. that there are more? There are other senators, <laughs> or are those? Maybe he is important. No, state senators are at the state level. So e- even the state has a like a, well, uh, a, a a so a state set the senators you're talking about are for the United States. There's two per state. And yes. they and they're in senators, Washington DC. And then there's a state ones who can come to your shows and see you cuz they're local. <laughs> yeah, and there's probably two per county or something. I don't even know, but but all I'm saying is like you would think it was like it would like be like saying you're in Destiny's Child, but you were like auditioned for it or something. I don't know. Right. I don't know what or like you were the girl that was in it for like one week. It's yeah, like, we were falling all over ourselves. I was like, my- oh, Senator. I'm sorry. I know it is a big deal, but I thought it was one of a hundred. I think how many state senators are there? And then we'll see how impressive it was. I was blown away. At how dumb I am when it comes to <laughs> politics. Someone said recently there's some joke made about no i don't vote i'm not what did they i'm not oh, old or i forget or what the joke was what oh i saw that too who was it wait where did we see that was that on it's nerdy to oh it, it was, was it- karen feehan yes oh my god we see this on the same clip oh she was like that's for nerds yeah she was like because she's like i vote with my pussy now just kidding i don't vote that's, that's mm-hmm. voting's for nerds she was joking about her only fans and how it's changed her Vo- like voter status or yeah, something. She's that was a joke. Yeah, she has money now. So she's yeah. a new tax bracket. It's changed <laughs> yeah. how she votes. Yeah. I love it. Karen Feehan, comedian, does OnlyFans. Fuck yes. And she's making more money than all of us, probably. I know. What are we doing with our lives? I got to get on there and see what she's up to. I bet so many of her subscribers are just people who are curious. You know? I mean, she's got a lot of good... She, I like her wares that she's peddling. She's fucking awesome. She's badass. I was telling Chris about her last night, actually. I was like, oh, we gotta look at Karen Fian. You're gonna love her, because she's just, like, I sexy and Avi bold and Karen. fucking... Huh? That's so funny. I was telling was Avi about Karen. Karen. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and it was yesterday. K-E-R-R-Y-N, for anyone who's Fian. F-E-E-H-A-N. She's so funny. She used to be on You Up a lot um, when we did the serious show. She's great. She's going to come to my show at uh, the Beacon in New York yes. and hang backstage. This She's weekend. just like no nonsense, nice, but like also really intimidating, so funny. And she does OnlyFans, so fuck yeah. And she holds nothing back. Remember she had that breakup and we were talking about it on You Up and she told us every detail yeah. and how much she hated him. And she want. had just broken up with him like the day before. And then this I think they got I back seek. together. She didn't what? And she she's sober too and she has do not serve on her wrist. <laughs> oh yeah, the tattoo. Yeah. She's fucking great. Um, I love anyone that thought is 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 that bold and out there. I'm trying to be more so, but the more that I think of like just saying it like it is. I even get scared about talking shit about Gwyneth. I'm like, someday I'm going to meet her and be like, I love you. And be like, I hope you never <laughs> see the episode from Tuesday, January 26th or whatever day it's going to be when this airs. Like, I do have those fears. But Karen doesn't seem to give a fuck. But yeah, have you ever been in a fight before? Have you ever gotten assaulted? I feel like Noah has a yes on this. Noah probably does it in training. <gasps> I do it in, oh, in yeah. training. And I wanted to say that it's, um, you told the story about your dad getting into like an argument with his friend mm-hmm. and you gave him very sage advice, which was dad, just drop it. It's not worth it. 
Because what happens to your cortisol levels and the stress that you put on yourself. He's not with his friends. And he's old. He can't take a punch. I know, but I've it's never all taken of us. If, if you if you think about like how you feel after you get really angry, like were, did you feel really exhausted when you got home? I felt invigorated. No, I felt like I felt really. I felt good because I felt like I won because I got the last moment. But okay. after it, I felt I was worried about Chris being embarrassed because I don't want him to think he has like a white trash girlfriend that's like trying to get in fights. <laughs> so I felt, but you know what? Chris kind of likes when I get like that. He, I've only said it twice in my life where I was like, I, I said about Andrew Tate and I said about this other woman who was trying to like get in the way of our relationship. And I was like, I want to kick him in the fucking throat. I said that about Andrew <laughs> Tate the other night. I was like, he's one guy that I f- would fear would be like, you're ugly and old. And I'm like, no, I wouldn't give a fuck. I want to kick him in the throat. I've never really wanted to be that violent to anyone. And then there was this other girl that I used to s- just joke with Chris. And I wasn't joking. I was like, I want to fight her. I'm going to fight It's hard to fight. So what I was going to say, it's I know, like, but- it, you get winded, like all this adrenaline comes up and it's great and you have this burst of energy, but then you are exhausted. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not like in the movies. I mean, no one ever looks cool after a fight, but I like wanting to fight. I like that adrenaline, okay. I think. Yes. Of like, I'm going to fucking do it. I guess I don't really want it to happen, but I don't, I don't want to win a fight. I just want someone to punch me and then I look like the winner because I didn't fight back because I don't think violence is the answer. So I kind of, I want them to prove what losers they are and then get arrested. Okay. Yes. And then have to like, they, she loses custody of her fucking child that I know <laughs> she has and is abandoning and trying She's to find training a new daddy them to for poop her. on people's desks. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. But it if felt you had so a, good. A copy of Alan Carr's book. You could have just dropped it in her lap. <laughs> she can't read. <laughs> this woman was the, just, just the biggest fucking moron. And as someone who does not know who the speaker of the house was or who Nancy Pelosi was, I admit I'm not the smartest tool in the fucking crayon box but i am i at least she was one of the dumbest people ever and she was also so drunk and here's this other thing i don't understand if you're drunk know that you're drunk i used to be a drunk too okay when you get out of hand and you get too drunk know that you're embarrassing have a little voice in the back of your head that says you're drunk you're embarrassing when i used to get blackout drunk i knew when the world started spinning I knew I was embarrassing people. I knew I was embarrassing myself. And I would try to like crawl off and die alone in the corner. I would try to isolate myself from the mayhem. But people were showing up at shows this weekend fucking wasted and being like, Nikki, I love you. And <laughs> grabbing me. One girl grabbed me so hard. She, her head slammed into mine. Oh, I yeah. felt concussed. She ran at me. She ran and was like, bestie. And I can't even believe she was a bestie. And shout out to you pick up that Alan Carr book. But she was so sweet, but she ran up, slammed my head, and then she grabbed my head gracefully, and she goes, I just want you to be more delicate with yourself. Be gentle oh with yourself. God. And I'm like, you literally just concussed me to the point that Matt, on your boyfriend, was about to call the security guard over. And like he, and afterwards, he was like, are you okay? And yeah. this woman told me to be more gentle with myself. I was like, the irony. Just, I just, were you guys, dr- we'll get back from the break. I want to know, Anya, were you the kind of drunk that you were like proud and loud? Coming what happened to being these. a really embarrassed drunk and knowing yeah. that, yes, I need this thing, but I'm also, like, I'm that kind of pothead. I know what I'm doing is obnoxious to others. I don't like blowing smoke in other people's faces. I'm very cognizant of how annoying my addiction is. What happened to being a little bit <laughs> of a empathetic addict? Let's talk about that when we get back. Plus, Fanthrax. Like, the other day, I was engaging in some pot smoking with a friend and they did not seem to care that there were people next to us that were going to have to breathe in the smoke. And I was like, no, we can't do this here. There's people right there. And he's like, but it's, it's pot smoke. It doesn't linger. And I know I just said it didn't linger in hotel rooms. It really doesn't. <laughs> you give it a cleaning. It does not linger. Uh, cigarette smoke is different. But in, in public, I don't like to blow plumes of smoke in people's faces. I'm very embarrassed of this thing that I need to do that's inconveniencing other. I know it's toxic. Any kind of smoke... Uh, same with alcohol, like being loud or cigarettes, like uh, just mindful of others. Did you, when you drank, you guys, and would get belligerent, were you aware of what a fucking mess you were and embarrassing? Yes. 
I was aware and you have to have appropriate sh- or you have to have shame, like some appropriate shame. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking <laughs> yes. for. Yeah. It's just Where's a little shame? dose of appropriate shame. Like, oh, what did I do? The oh no's. The next morning I would be like, what did I do? But it, when you're drinking, it's always magnified. So you always think you are so much worse than you actually were. Mm. At least maybe women do. I no, don't know. I think it's, they think it's, I think they don't know how bad it is. I think everything is amplified, but that's why people scream so loud because your senses get dulled when you're drinking because you get more dumb. I hate yeah, to but use I would the R read word, but the, you know the R word? <laughs> you get more of that when you drink. So you're not getting more brave. You're not getting more brazen. You're not like getting liquid courage. You're getting more R, okay? That's what happens to your brain. It's closer and closer to being shut down. So that's yeah. why you're more like, I'm going to dance like an idiot and feel free to like celebrate and like live it up. It's because you're getting stupider. You know, like people that have mental handicaps and how they're a little bit more free with hugs and enthusiasm. And they like things more and they scream what they like things. You know what I'm talking about? The things we can't make fun of? You know the enthusiasm that people that have mental handicaps have for life? That's you when you're drunk. There's no difference, okay? It's, it means you aren't as smart. It, it, you don't have intelligence. You don't have a moral compass. As, not a moral compass, but just... So you just... So that's why people scream is like everything's deadened. Their ears are deadened. Their, uh, their senses are deadened. I don't feel like... But I don't think the thing that went away, there was always a little bit of a glimmer in me by a little like a little candle inside of me that was like, you're embarrassing right now. Because I think I grew up seeing so much embarrassing alcoholism that I knew no matter what's happening, take it, just pull back a little bit, even though you feel like this is the right move. That's why everyone who drinks wants everyone around them to drink. Yes, yeah. so that they can let that, so there's no witnesses. Yes. <laughs> but now there's CCTV cameras and there's <laughs> it, there's videos. There was a one way that I ever got someone in my life to quit drinking was to show them a video of themselves when they were drunk. And they were like, <gasps> and then they stopped for a really long time. Yeah, it actually, it gets people to stop. It doesn't, it doesn't last, but it is a quick fix if you need someone to like kind of get sober fast is to show them how bad they are because you don't know when you're drunk you look in the mirror and you're like i'm fucking hot i'm entertaining i'm sexier like i've i've never felt better about myself than that's why when i watch the real housewives i'm always shocked that like months later when they've had all this time to look back and watch the episodes these women will like sonia clearly has a drinking problem so bad Mm -hmm. and then she'll just double down on it and be like no, I was fine. I was having fun. Everyone needs to lighten up. It's like she does not have any I'm kind of I'm guessing she's not watching the episodes. I'm guaranteeing But they you. show clips. They'll be like, what was this yeah, all the about? Reunions. She's probably drunk when they show them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding you. Like I've been that way before with stuff where you don't want to see it because you're not ready to give it up to. You know, like you just, you cannot. Yeah, I think I, it I takes a saying, while. Though. And But the problem is the only antidote to feeling terrible about how much you drank is what? Drinking more, more drinking. Yes, yeah, drinking more. That's all they have. You know, yeah, it's so the only that's cycle. the only thing they can reach to to feel better. They don't have good friends. They don't have a support system. They have a husband that's probably cheating on them. They don't. Their daughters fucking hate them. They have no. So when they're feeling anxious, they got to go to the thing. And it's so ironic because you're feeling anxious about the thing that made you feel anxious in the first. Like you have to. That's that's your safety blanket that's causing you the pain, and that's fucking addiction for you. I actually have a fan like tricked- about this. Oh yes, fan You do? Let's get yeah. to it. All right, great. <laughs> okay, let's um get Lauren's take on this. My sister. Hi, Nikki and Noah. Oh. This is Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Um, I've been listening since you updates, Aww. and I just feel like I really need to say thank you to Nikki for always being so open and real when talking about alcohol um, in regards to your personal life and society mm-hmm. as a whole. I was a heavy drinker for years, and I feel like you were kind of planting sobriety seeds in Aww. my head. Um, the whole time I've been listening to you. Uh, and then this past summer, when my boyfriend was hospitalized for a week because of his alcohol consumption, I felt like I had you in the back of my head and the advice and resources you have given on this podcast um, to help me sober up 
and to help him sober up. So seriously, thank you. Oh and God. just a reminder to everyone out there. I'm young. He's young. I'm 25. He's 35. Uh, yes, I have an old soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just a reminder that alcohol can really fuck you up even you're when you're young. young. And yeah. I think a lot of people don't remember that. Anyway, thank you. Thank J- you. J- Jack Daniels almost killed my boyfriend. <laughs> oh my God. That's so bad. Dude. Um, that's so awesome to hear. Thank you so much. And it's, yeah, I think it's, it's just good to have, that's why I, I do little messaging here and there. Cause it just takes some time sometimes for things to like get through. And even for me, like I fall back on stuff. Like I, you know, no one's perfect. Of I, I was lucky enough to just not touch alcohol after I gave it up. But even if you're struggling to quit and it's not that easy for you, just keeping the ball up in the air of talking about how it's just isn't the answer to your problems and it isn't as much fun as you've convinced yourself it is and all these things that are you unequivocally true about alcohol are nice to know. It's so You're so inspiring to me at 25 to be done and to help your boyfriend through that. That's so fucking cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I hope he's doing well. It took me two more – it took me until 27 – to say goodbye to it and um and the more that i live the more it just gets easier and easier because it's just you get pulled over you don't worry about anything you're never gonna be drunk when you get pulled over that's a whole thing you 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 forget someone's name don't worry you weren't drunk you don't have to feel like an asshole you don't remember a story someone told you you weren't drunk it's it wasn't your fault that you don't remember it wasn't an interesting story like you don't realize all the things that you the shame you carry around when you drink too much of like that you just are free from when you when you just don't have it as an option to like always shit on yourself about so that's so cool lauren thank you for sharing that okay um on one of the reddit dumps we talked about finding hair in food Oh, yeah. Um, so this is a response to that from Marissa. Oh, it just made me gag this a little bit. Marissa. Hi, Marissa. I was just listening to your episode about the Reddit dump about the hair. And hair really doesn't gross me out at all. In mm-hmm. fact, <laughs> something <laughs> my partner, my girlfriend, hates and is literally so disgusted by about me is that I – Use my hair to floss. <laughs> no, when there's no floss available, you have strong hair. Yes. Yeah. So, just wanted to let you know that that is an option oh, for those my God. who aren't grossed out by hair. <laughs> this oh, woman doesn't my- color her hair. That is incredible. I bet she. Ha- what kind of hair do you think she has? Send us your hair. Yeah, yeah. I want to see a picture. <laughs> I yes, I need some new it. floss. <laughs> it's thick that is awesome because my hair would break immediately yes. and there have been times where i've thought you know maybe i could because you get something caught in your tooth i've that tried would be it. awesome and but i feel I like then my hair, hair would get there. caught in my tooth and then i'd have a, a, a backup there would be a bumper to bumper shit in my teeth <laughs> um that is so funny and i remember <laughs> someone on a, some show being like you think that's a bad first date? I once without went out with a guy who leaned across the table and pulled out one of my hairs and started flossing with it. And I always – it's in some kind of movie or show I really like. And I always thought that is the worst line. No one would ever do that on a first date. But I guess you're someone on a first date with you could. But if they pulled out your hair, that would be insane. <laughs> I always Serial hated killer. that joke. It got me – I forget what it's from. I wish I could find the reference. But whenever it comes up, I'm always like, I'll ignore this joke. The rest of the show is amazing. <laughs> um, all right. Next up. Okay. Next up, uh, we have Renee. Hi, Hi, my besties. So I am a therapist, no brag. But I just wanted to say, hmm. based on your guys' conversations about you know, worrying about what people think, if people don't like me. I have a rule for my clients, and that is if you wouldn't take their advice, you don't take their criticism. I hope Ooh. you can apply that rule. I also, all That's the gynecology good. talk, um, my doctor shared a story with me where um, she had a patient who was like in her 70s, and she was due for a pelvic exam or whatever, and she shows up and lays on the table and is all giggly, and my doctor, you know, spreads her open to get in there, and... <laughs> The patient yells out tea time and had pulled, had put a tea bag up her pussy for my, my doctor to find and just thought it was the funniest thing and couldn't stop laughing at herself. So I just had to share that because I mean, I can see my life path going that way at 70 to shove tea bags up my 
cooter for a laugh. But I mean, anyway, I love you, Bestie, so so much. Oh, Keep you. doing what you do and take Thank good care, you, girl. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. <laughs> Tea bag. Like, was it steeped or had it not been steeped? I'm guessing that. Well, I'm guessing if she was in her 70s, that thing was dry as a fucking <laughs> pair of fresh socks. <laughs> um, yeah, that is so funny, and it really. Because I've been talking about when I pull out a tampon after, like one time I was in, I have a joke where I talk about masturbating and I kind of forgot I had a tampon in and then I wanted to like fuck myself. And so I had to pull out the tampon and I didn't, I didn't want to like walk it to the bathroom before I masturbated. Cause you know, when you're ready to fuck yourself, you just want it. So I just set it on top of something on my desk. You can say on my like on bedside table. <laughs> I don't want to give away the whole joke. So I set it on top of something because I didn't want it like touching. But it's a bloody tampon that I like. But I was going to throw it away. Like, it's not like I was like leaving it there for like decor. Right. But I said at one point in it, I go, I don't want to walk into the bathroom like holding like a dead mouse. And people laugh at that. That was a Sarah Lena line. She once said that um, a guy pulled out a tampon when they were like having they were about to have sex. And he was like, she was like, it looked like he was like carrying a dead mouse. And I always thought that was funny. But now I have a new one of like a steeped tea bag. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> Tea time. Um, and I bet she, I mean, that old woman had not worn a tampon for a while. So she just wanted to put something up there. Oh my and God. And I once, as someone who once put a gummy, a, a sugary gummy worm up my vagina to go pick up my boyfriend who I knew was going to finger me within seconds of getting in the car. <laughs> and I knew he liked gummy worms and was probably hungry from his long <laughs> trip across America that I like a good vagina surprise. Uh, like like what are those little kinder balls or whatever or like inside What's there's a toy kind? <laughs> oh I like mean? that you those get in a Swedish like kinder balls and it, inside is like a little, little like toy. Lego Pikachu or something you're um, a fun or, girlfriend yeah Wait, that did, was a fun how was I mean I response? do some fun stuff final thought Chris and I have I have so much fun I'm just like give me it like I do this thing where I'll just like try to grab his you know thing and I just go like but give it to me. Like, I want it. Like, I start, like, complaining. Like, this will be in public. And I'm like, but I want it. And he's like, but, like, what are you going to do with it right now? I'm just like, just give it to me. And I just keep trying to get it. Um, He also is tickled by, what kind of funny stuff have I done with, I mean, so much. I, there have been so many. There's a, I, I oftentimes, like, early on in our relationship, I, like, was naked under this, like, robe thing because we met when i was doing a tv show and on this tv show we would get our hair and makeup done in these velvet robes and then we would change it to our like you know binding wardrobe and one time i went to go meet him like somewhere in this building because he had worked there at mtv for a while so he knew like all these like edit bays that were abandoned we had just started sneaking around and fooling around he was like meet me on the 17th floor and i went up there and he's like yeah so i'm going to show you this edit down here when i was like acting like i was going to go look at a cut of a thing and then we went in there and he thought I was going to have like clothes on underneath and I opened it up and it was like nothing. And so that's always been like a very thrilling thing is where he thinks that I have clothes underneath something. Like the other day I met him in a garage to give him keys to my car and I put on a trench coat because it was like the appropriate weather for it. And I put on this really slutty thing underneath that um, I had bought for the strip club surprise, you know, that I did in London. But it had arrived really late. It was Amazon. <laughs> And it's like, uh, Taylor was like cleaning my room and she goes, what is this? And it was just like a tangle of strings. And I'm like, oh, it's the slut wear I got. So I put it on once for him. It looked amazing. Like I was like, oh, this is great. So I went down there to give him the keys and we got into like an argument like while I was giving him the keys and like it was just over something dumb but we were just it was tense right like I was like well why would you say that and he's like but why would you say that and so we're like in the middle and so it's at a point where it's like we have to go and he's like okay well I guess I'll see you tomorrow and I go I want to I I have I have a surprise for you and he's like what and I'm like just like there's I'm, I'm dressed all slutty underneath this and he's like wait what and i was just gonna flash him like in my parking garage and he's like you are and i go can i just show you and he's like i think it'd be better when we're like oh. feeling better and i go i go and no he goes i think it'd be better when we could actually like touch each other because he couldn't spend the night he was like what about when we can actually like do something with it and i go but just like now please and he was like Really? Like, I think it'd be better. And I go, just for your spank bank. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so good because it got him out of, like, whatever mood he was in. He was, like, kind of mad at me, probably. I was mad at him. But he was, like, annoyed with me. And it just, like, cut him out of it because I go was for your spank bank <laughs> meaning like you can think about it later and turn it off. And then I just like unbuttoned it and like opened it up and he was like, 
that is really good. And then he, and then we just parted ways. It was like a drug deal, but where I just show him like a tit. Um, do you have little fun things like that ever? Like just like horny uh, jokes? No, and this yes, makes me feel do. worse about you probably myself. Can't think of them because you're like have privacy. No, in your I life. don't. I don't think I have any. All of mine are like goofy, like just twerking in the kitchen out of nowhere. That's like, cute. I just had one it's the other not- day. Like, I'll just say something to Avi, and then I'll just, like, really quickly, I'll be like, oh, and then you're going to come on my face later? And he's like, what? Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! That's so good. And then, like, like casually, like, we'll go to Home Depot, and then we got to get that, we got to plug in that new, um, you know, the new faucet and have that. So, and then you come on my face? Like, like yeah, like that. that. Exactly. Awesome. And I'll say it oh real fast. God, and be like, so fun. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, I had another one. I always just after sex, I'm like, oh god, that was good. I'm always just like, mommy, likey, <laughs> and he's just like, stop it. I'm just like, oh god, I feel like I just gave birth. Like I'll just say weird shit that he's just like, I don't even know what any of that means, <laughs> but it's obviously like I'm just like kind of mommy I'm like, like five stars, formidable performance. I'm just like. Call Siskel and Ebert because that's one's getting in the books. Like I just say weird shit, but it's like it's and I have um I screenshotted um who whoever makes our uh stills for the YouTube video Bravo they always look so good and the other day they had Chris's and I was like on my YouTube looking at my new you know the new videos put up and I saw Chris's face and I was like oh that guy's fucking hot and I was like it's mine yours. and it was so nice <laughs> and then I sent him a picture and I go uh we have a problem there's like too hot of a guy on YouTube and we have to pull this video so and he was like loved it thank you and I was like I'm not kidding you look at this this is not okay things need to change around here. I was just getting mad about how hot he was and then I um put that uh I screenshotted that still and it's now my uh it's in your spank bank it's not it's now my spank bank it's on my phone it replaced uh leon uh sarah lena's (laughs) baby and because his face just looks so cute and we didn't even talk about how into his fucking hair how sexual it is to me when he was on but um it was good it was so fun well this has been the show fanfax was amazing thank you all for listening thank you for coming to shows this week i'm gonna be in new haven connecticut and then I'm going to be in um, New, York, New City? York City at the Beacon Theater on Saturday. Tickets available still to each shows, I think, but they are running low. So if you want to go and also if you want to do a meet and greet, just message me um, in my DMs and let me know. And, um, and then just announced I'm doing a kind of, I don't think you'd call it a residency, but I have four uh, weekends of dates with David Spade in Las Vegas <gasps> at the Venetian and that is so exciting. I'm coming. Uh, pre-sale for that started today on Tuesday. Oh, um, and you can get the link at my... So, like, if you want to plan a trip to Vegas, plan it around these shows. I want to do shows with David Spade the rest of my life. So, please, let's sell these <laughs> out. So, it's me and David Spade, April 28th and 29th, June 30th and July 1st, September 29th and 30th, and November 17th and 18th. So, get your gals together. Get your guys together. Come out and see us in Vegas. Pre-sale is on now. You can find that at my Instagram. And uh, don't be careful. And Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs>